Hey guys, uh, today I am doing Ruby Volume 4, Chapter 2. Now, this episode, it starts off with Weiss like it ended with Weiss in the last episode. And we meet her brother, Whitley, which he, his character kind of confuses me. It's weird how he acts, but he's just kind of an enigma. I, I, I'm not sure how to feel about him. Now, with, um, oh yeah, pan, and it pans up to a picture of their whole family, and we see, we see the family photo, and it doesn't seem like the women in the family are very happy where they are. <sighs> but then we cut back to, um, Ruby and everybody else, and Ruby's hearing things in her sleep, which is strange. Like, uh, she was hearing Pira in the time where she died. They, um, they, they, of course, they get up from that, and they start walking, and they come across a town that has been destroyed. Everything is gone, it seems like, and, um, we see a huntsman that said bandits raided everything, and then after, of course, the bandits came, the Grim came after them. <sighs> and this is actually the first time we actually see, well, blood and death in the show, because I'm, I'm sure we've seen a little bit of it before, but you can definitely see it on the huntsman that died. And Ren seems to be taking this very, well, like he's taking it harder than everybody else. And um, we see when Ren walks over and Ren and Nora see a symbol, they recognize that symbol. Now, we don't exactly know what it is yet, but I'm guessing either it's a symbol of a bandits or it kind of looks like a hoof print of a Grim. Or, no, we're not sure right now. Then we cut back to Weiss and um, with uh, Jacques, her father, and Ironwood talking. They're arguing about what to do with the kingdom because right now Ironwood has stopped. Well, um, tra he's he's he stopped transporting dust because they're not sure. They don't want to start a war, and they don't want people to think they are starting a war. They, it's just a precaution. Now, what Ironwood is doing right now, I think, is a very smart move, where he's like, okay, we need to keep all the dust for ourselves right now, and, we're, and we can't let anybody else get it, because if they because they don't want to supply their maybe enemies with any dust. And uh, I, he leaves, and he, and he tells Weiss, oh, there's always a place for you at the school, which is good. Ironwood is always one of my... Well, one of my favorite characters in the story so far. And, um... I know a lot of people thought he was going to be a bad... Uh, well, bad guy, like in League with Cinder and them in the beginning, but he's not, which is nice. Now, her father... Her father's a douche. He's an ass to the nth degree. He... They, I know they're trying to make him unlikable, and they definitely are doing a good job of it. And we see on his desk that um he has Whitley on it, so we're probably guessing he's kind of grooming Whitley to take on the um, She Dust Company after him. <sighs> and uh, he's planning a kind of banquet or, a, like, le well, basically a party to um show that people of Remnant in the world in general... That they're on their side and they want peace. So um, he asks Weiss to, of course, sing at the party. Now, it's a little sneaky how he says it. Because she asked him, are you telling me to do this or are you asking? And he, of course, responds with, I think it would make a lot of people happy. Because he doesn't want to say, oh yeah, I'm telling you to do it. But that was mostly the conversation, and um, then we also see Klein, which is the, her butler. He seems like a really nice guy, and um, people have pointed out that he seems to represent the Seven Dwarves, since he has all these personality changes that seem like it, and his eye color changes with each personality. <clears throat> now, Ruby starts hearing voices in her head again, and she wakes up during the night, and we find... Um, we find John practicing to 
Pira's video. I like probably a training video that she left for him. Now this, oh god, oh my goodness, that <laughs> um, I saw all, all the reactions to it, and it 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 hit me right here, um, that, mm. I didn't think we would get anything like that yet, but it it was I thought it was a very nice scene, and um, is good. I would say good character development for Jean, and we can see that it's still hurting him after all these months. <sighs> now, I don't know what's happening with Ruby's dreams, but uh, some people are saying somehow Pierre is alive, which I wouldn't like if she's alive. If she's alive, I would, I think it'd be a bad move on their part. And um, it would kind of cut down her death. But um, I think that's about it. If you guys have any questions, uh, make sure to put them in the comments down below or just want to talk about something in this episode. Um, yeah, that's about it. Remember to like, and if you're new here, may subscribe maybe. Alright, bye guys.